and um, would shut down ports. As, uh, uh, if you're doing that for the animals, then you go to the abattoir, because that's the point where the, the economic pressure is, because you've got the timing, is crucial. In the same way at ports, timing of goods, you know, and the, block, the blocking of the, of the, of the um, One, one more question, what is your view with regards to keeping pets? Yeah, well, the film that um, influenced um, the new wave of young, non-violent direct activists, because a lot of the animal rights people have got this reputation of haranguing individuals. Well, the young millennials, they're all about, we've got to be disciplined and not target individuals. We either engage in receptive advocacy, or, yeah, but I'm getting to that, the Earthlings film, right? Or we target systems. So they, this young generation have been film, um, influenced by this film called Earthlings. Yeah? So you can watch it, it's quite a dark film. But there's five chapters. One is uh, around um, the food industry. One, one is around sports, um, you know, racing, greyhound racing, horse racing. One is around uh, circuses, entertainment, you know, uh, whatever. And another one is around pets. And then the other one is the, the me um, medical, pharmaceutical experimentation. On it. But one whole chapter is on pets. What is your view? Well, it's, it's basically an exploitative system, the buying and selling. And this is the abolitionist approach, is that the making the profit of the sentient being is where the problem is. Without that, let's say without that. Let's say you go, there was no profit. let's well, say if there's no profit involved and you just want to do keep a dog or a cat. Well, the thing is, in my household, and I've come round to it, I'd never would have done four or five years ago before the birth of our latest child. Okay. But um, we've got some rescue guinea pigs <laughs> because I see the value of the children connecting with those animals in a different way to what we do on the TV or, you know, the fact that there are three million animals are killed every day in, in the UK and we don't see any of it. That's the other relationship. So if you're, let's animals. say your daughter and your son wanted a dog or a cat, would you allow them? They've got a cat. Oh, it, wasn't, do. it wasn't my decision. Okay. Um, so I don't feed it. I don't. Have a, I appreciate it, but it, ca you know, it catches a lot of mice. It, ca it doesn't really catch birds. But, you know, I, I what if it doesn't? It as an animal, what, if, what, if, what if it doesn't have any mice to catch? What, what then? No, it is fed. That's what I'm saying. Fed I don't by agree. It's fed. From, like a lot of vegans will even give cats vegan food. Seriously? Yeah. Don't you think that's abusing the animal? Rather well, than you see, so the I'm very people involved. who the very dogs. people who are saying we should take care of animal welfare, I tell you what, and now involved in abusing the animals. Dogs do very well off a vegan oh, come diet. On. Don't tell see, me. No, don't I've tell seen, me the dogs I've are seen, meant to I've eat. I've seen vegan dogs of the same type next to each other, and they're more lively you than, see, than the other dogs. You see, when it comes tell, to cats, be honest with me and tell me, are dogs or cats born to be vegans? When it just just because I'm not into this big like you know the main thing with vegans is they will take on rescue animals. You know? No, but I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a pet. Look, there are many vegans and many vegetarians out there who have dogs and cats as their pets. Yeah. Now, if anybody forces a dog or a cat, or rather, how would I say, um, orients them in a way that they have nothing to eat, either they die or they have a vegan, food, make vegan meal. Obviously, the dog or the cat is going to eat something, you know, yeah. to keep itself alive. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, it is for the survival. But if anyone does not give them the option to eat the, the real diet that they are meant to, yeah. would you not consider that to be abuse? I think, I think that the whole pet industry yeah. should evaporate and ultimately then the rescue animals would evaporate. <laughs> no, but I'm asking you, if a vegan only feeds vegan food to yeah. a cat or a dog, yeah. yes, would you not consider that to be abuse? Well, Dogs have been shown to adapt a lot better. I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you what it will do once it eats vegan food. I'm asking you the very option that is given. The only option is given is vegan food. Do you consider that to be abuse of the animal? Um, 
Yeah, I think there's levels, isn't there? There's levels of abuse. I mean, because I'm immediately thinking of the abuse of those animals. It's, the, it's the not their staple feed. diet. Let's put it that way. That's in the dog or cat feed. You know? Yeah, it's not their staple diet. And they've been, you know, slaughtered. Okay, you know? Come on, we are not talking about and, the slaughtering. You know, so we are, we are talking about the, the we are talking about the cat animals. and the and a dog as a pet. Yeah, so I and think, if a dog I think and a cat, those other animals. Well. No, but, like, well, <laughs> you like, see, what, one thing I've noticed is that whenever I ask you a question, mm -hmm. you somehow <laughs> kind of I don't know. Either you you knowingly do this, or maybe you have been I trained don't, I don't trained feel, in your interviews to do this. I don't feel happy in that situation. No, I think cats. Should Why don't be, you just say that is abuse? Because it's you know clearly what abuse. I was saying, you know what I was saying about the sovereignty of uh, community. I think the same for the animals. I, I read to my daughter. I read um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. You know? And the main point thrust of that book was that it doesn't matter if you're from a high welfare uh, slave plantation or from a blue, brutal uh, plantation. The biggest cause of suffering was the separation of the mother from the child, of the splitting of the community. And I, I feel the same for the, for the animals. They've got their natural grouping, which we've separated them from and that in itself is a cause of suffering but I think you see you have completely think, you have completely neglected the question I asked you yeah and I, I think you're doing that deliberately well I think it's you should choice. you should look Do you want to know about our cat no I want to know your view about this vegan guy forcing his cat or a dog to eat only vegan food would you not consider that as abuse and if if yes, tell me why. If no, tell me why. So, with the dogs that I've seen, no. And I'll tell you why. The dog identifies with the family as a pet. You know? I think, and I don't I think, think that's look, a natural this is, situation. This is where, I'm not saying that you know, that's so a natural situation. You, you have been doing really well so far. So, can I just say with the... Like, no, no, with, with all due respect, you have been yeah. doing really well so far. Yeah. When it came to this particular topic, I don't think you've been fair. Because to feed a dog or a cat vegan food when you know that is not a staple diet to me that constitutes abuse well i think they should be in their natural environment I, 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 and they should be take, fed the well, natural well, environment is not vegan do you agree yeah but the animals do you agree the, the animal food <laughs> no. that's going to be fed do you, you agree that natural environment in a, in like you said catching mice yeah i think it's dogs, not vegan you know in you know America, this is this is what i don't America, like they have dog camp. you know one thing one thing i don't like is people when they know something is wrong then they should actually be brave enough to say it's wrong. So, and you, you have been, you have been brave enough to say it's wrong in many, many things except this, so this scenario. With regard, with regard and you have the, not been fair. With regard to the rainbow gatherings, do you remember what I said? What? Free from um, alcohol, drugs, technology, and domestic animals. Okay. Okay. So maybe no pets in your case. Within the rainbow gathering. Yeah, but at least you should call out those people who are feeding dogs and cats vegan food when that is not the staple diet well i wouldn't i wouldn't do that because Why? because, because they would they go see, against you then they see the alternative is giving them animals that have been uh, bred you know in a highly distressing situation you know? <laughs> so what do you so, do so what do you do yeah, you feed well, them vegan food well i think seriously like, for me what a rainbow do with regard to the animals is in America, they have dog camp so that the dogs can be with the dogs. The reason why we don't have, or well, we invite people not to bring their animals, if a dog comes into an environment and there's lots of, um, there's lots of new people coming all the, ta the time, the dog is going to be concerned, uh, you know, it's concerned. Very often times it will bark, it's not happy. It wants to know it's packed. Come you know? on. You know, if a also, dog... Also, the human <laughs> Look, look, let happy. me ask you this. If, 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 a dog do, the night, if a dog doesn't get any food and the only food you put in front of it is vegan food, it's obviously going to eat only vegan food. If you don't consider that as abuse, then I don't know what is abuse. But this is what I'm saying. There's dog camp. Let's be fair. This, there's dog camp. To me, to, let's be fair. Yeah, that is abuse. There's a precedent. Doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how you. Doesn't dogs. matter how you twist it. To me, that is abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you should acknowledge that. Well, I think the abuse. No. You're, you you're an intelligent them? person. What are you going to feed them? You're going to feed them what they eat. That's table we'll food. Let them go out and hunt. Either that, or don't keep them, them as out. pets. You, the idea would be to let them go out and hunt. No, exactly. All I'm saying is, if you want to keep them as pets, but what, then at least respect their staple food. Well, that's if why. If you don't want them as me, pets, then why, that is a different for thing. For me, that's why I don't want to go into the whole um, yeah. personal. But at least uh, that pet ownership thing. You see, that's maybe why I'm not involved in it. No, no. Whether you're involved or not, you should call it out. If somebody's abusing the animal then you should look at all animal welfare and only not the ones that basically somehow 
Well, this um, is where... Like, it's within was, your narrative. For example, I was in the Pyrenees. <laughs> yeah. I was up in the high mountains the and I saw the integrity of the herd of goats. Mm. I saw they were free to roam. Yeah. And for me, that's... I live, you know, where I live in the sticks. I see the dairy calves. They're dehorned. They're castrated. And they spend the whole time joyless in a, uh, a barn yeah. uh, over winter, hard standing and they're just standing there and then they spend a little time you know, in the past yeah, that is something what, that what is that? That's not, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking that's about the separation look, of, of when, the, of when the something of the when something is wrong, then you should be brave enough to say it's wrong so you see, what you I'm, see the animals in the natural what, what I saw, what I saw just now they have, that herd, they have that joy of life what I saw just and, now is, is you being selective in your um, welfare of the animals. Yeah, well, yeah, instead I of mean, you saying, instead of you dogs, saying clearly that those people exactly, exactly yeah. my point. Yeah, yeah. Then but, why is it not abused to force them to be herbivores? Because it's, it's shown that they're okay. <laughs> it's shown that they're okay. It's not an ideal situation. You know, you, you know, if I if I tell you to leave a child, yes, by itself without any social life or something no and it's, no no, no family, hear me out hear me out hear, dog, me, hear me out hear me out they, hear me out they create this strange he, hear me out if you put a if, if, you, if you put a child in a room and maybe only give it video games yes it might seem okay to you but you really don't know what's happening to the psychology to the person yes so what seems okay to you as a for a dog maybe because you don't speak dog language well, I think yes. dogs should be with other dogs you know that's what I see they've got pack, dogs you know. should be eating what is their stable and food they should be and, they should, and anyone who forces them to eat only vegan food they're abusing and the they animals should be the pack. do you agree they're abusing and the animals I think, do you agree they should be with the pack I think they, look if they're a pet a pack. A pack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they should be in the natural habitat. And like the cows should yeah. be with the herd. Okay, so I've agreed. Yeah. Now, do you agree that it is abuse to feed an animal that is carnivorous to, to feed yeah, them? Yeah, that's why I don't have a pet. That's why I never... <laughs> but do you got, agree that that is an got, abuse? We've got rescue guinea pigs. Do you agree I that is... I agree to having the rescue guinea pigs. Do you agree that's abuse? I think, you know, the, the dogs, ideally, they should be able to hunt for themselves. And like I say, the cat. It's how it's hunting. Okay. Yeah. So do you agree those people who keep dogs and pets as pets and feed it only vegan food is abuse? You know, I feel, it makes me feel uncomfortable, to be honest. Just it say does it's make, abuse, why don't you say it? No, because I, I'm, you're, you're I'm, not, I'm very not open enable, about, you're, you're very, people why, as abusers, you know, why not? Like, why not, if they're abusing? Okay, so let me ask you something. Those people who, who abuse, who basically send children to work, Yes, because they're abusing the children. Would you not label them as child abuse? Okay, look, look, so if we take the situation, okay, like Monkey World, do you know about Monkey World? What about Monkey World? Do you know about Monkey World? I don't think I know about Monkey World. Right, so there's lots of primates yeah. that have been experimented on and have been kept in tiny little cages, okay? Now, Monkey World is a, is a place that's taken them out of those torture, torturous institutions and tried to give them a life. Was Bring that abuse? Back. What, the torture? Yeah. yeah, so when you smash a, a primate's head 25 miles an hour against a, a, a brick wall to see what the impact is. What the impact is. Yeah. yeah, for me that's torture and that's not necessary. Is that abuse? That's abuse. Would you yeah. call them out? I call them out, yeah. Would you label them? Yeah. So Earlier you told me you don't like labeling people. Well, I don't think it's a good thing. I'm, I'm saying I'm not targeting individuals. I'm I, think targeting you're, I think you're being selective. I'm targeting You're targeting being selective system. just because the vegans is someone the vegan people maybe they identify more with your ideology that's the reason maybe you don't want to label them is that right label who the, the people who are abusing the animals i uh, know but i'm talking about the system it's like for example within, Mama, did you understand the, abattoir, the question i asked you is there anyone in uh, an abattoir who's going to enjoy killing animals but did you understand the question i asked you do you think the people in the lab, lab did you, know? you understand the question i asked you i'm sure you did the reason you're not labeling these vegans who abuse the animals by feeding the carnivorous animals the, the vegan food, you don't want to label them I, as, I call, as abusers I, of animals. I, I call them it's out. Because, it's because they are the people who might be supporting your cause. I'd, I'd call them out if um, they bought the pet. Yeah. So even if but they didn't if they buy pressed, the pet, if even they, if they did if, not if buy the pet. If that animal was going to die, doesn't matter. If the animal it was going to die, matter. 
Even if they rescued the animal, they're providing them life. Yeah. Even if they rescued the animal, listen, listen. Even if they rescued the animal, yeah. You see, this is what I mean, selective. No. Yes, you are. You are. I'm sorry to say this. It's clear abuse if you're if you're putting torture on an animal. No, I'm not talking about torture. Physical abuse comes in many forms. Physical abuse. Abuse comes in many forms. It comes in psychological form. It comes in physical form, and it also comes in in forms where you actually take away the staple diet, and then somehow. Blackmail it into basically you either live or you sorry you you either die or you, you eat this food only. Yeah, I mean vegans engage in this debate with other vegans. You know. there's, there's I think you I think you're intelligent enough to call there, them out, a, but you are not doing it for self, some selfish reasons. There's a self I don't know why. There's a self-critical um, a culture within the vegan community, and if I'm with one group, I might get a feeling, even though that animal is being fed vegan food, that dog, yeah. I might feel okay about it. I might be in another situation where uh, a dog is being um, fed vegan food and I don't feel happy about a whole situation. There's more factors. And some of the factors I'm saying of the abuse, You know, the way you water it down, biggest, I feel happy or I don't feel happy, the, instead the of biggest, saying that the these people abuse are abusing this poor this animal, this, separation this the animal path. which cannot talk, which cannot and express this, itself, you are now saying you feel happy or not happy. I mean, you're really watering it down. Just say, you know, like the way you have been talking so critically about this uh, monoculture. But look at the food. Maybe you should, maybe you should at, use the same. Look at the pet foods. That's what I'm saying. What about the look, pet food? Look what the mainstream is. I mean, I personally don't agree look with at, any look, of that. Look at what <laughs> but the, that is not the point I'm at making. Look the pet food that the mainstream is offering. Do, I, do you think I agree with and that? The, I don't know. Exactly. I don't really would, so I but don't you shouldn't that. agree with. And that's you, why I don't think. No, no. Equally, it's not a happy situation hold on. Either, equally, you should be calling out those people who abuse this poor animal. But it's not a happy situation either way. If you feed them the food from the sweepings of factory farms, if it's not, that's not a happy situation. If it's not good either way, if then call them vegan. Then call them both out equally. I say it's not an ideal world. No, no, no. no. You see, you're, you're watering it down now. We're not in an ideal world with regard to humans, and that's what I'm saying. Okay. Community sovereignty. That's it, for me, it's the solution. By the way, what is, um, we talked a lot about the environment, the animals, okay? What about your belief? You know, by the way, I'm a Muslim. Yeah. What is your belief in terms of God? Yeah, I believe there's, I mean, I'm, we just look around us, you know, there's a creation, isn't there? Okay. So. There's a creation, we know. What creation. was the creator? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you don't have one without the other. Then you get not really, the, not everyone the has the same one. views. Yeah. Some people completely deny the creator and say that's. You don't. No, because I'm filled with wonder. <laughs> I'm filled oh, with fair enough. Or, you know, I think people who are. In Do the you have a particular belief? No, I mean, I was. I kind of. I have been involved in Buddhist practice. Okay. I don't identify myself as a Buddhist. Oh, no. um, I've involved uh, I've, uh, a yoga, physical yoga discipline. But I don't really identify. I don't identify myself as a Hindu. Um, the Buddhist is more about. I'm. I like the Buddhism because of the um, emphasis on compassion to all sentient beings, mm -hmm. not just to other humans. So I, I like that emphasis. And that's why it's I the like same to, in Islam, do you know that? Well, that's what I'd like to see is leaders yeah. from the different... Just, know, because, Christian just because we are not vegans Muslim. and vegetarians doesn't yeah. mean that we are not compassionate to animals. Yeah. Because if that was the case, then you would see, you would see that in the teachings. For example, we do not... Um, we do not even uh, believe that people who go about hunting food yeah. for food, uh, and that includes animals, just for trophy hunting or something, yeah. is something which is completely disallowed. It's, it's, yeah. it's haram, it's forbidden, yeah. because you're doing it for a sport, yeah. Yeah. and you're, you're causing pain to the sentient being without any cause other yeah. than your pleasure. So their pain is your pleasure, basically. And that is something that we don't. So Muslims wouldn't go to circuses or to like dog racing or horse racing. Or well, ideally they shouldn't, yeah. because all of these places the animals get abused. The sea world, or whatever. Yeah. Well, if they, you know, like I said, keeping dogs even, yes, other than uh, for hunting or for your protection or something, is something that's that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So that includes um, other other pets. For yeah. example, so if you're not, if you're misusing the, uh, what is not misusing, if you're mistreating the animal, yeah. yes, then it's something that you're not allowed to do. Yeah, well, this is what I'd say to like the Muslim community. No, yeah. the green community is a very large community, it is, yeah. and it has no scripture. <laughs> you see what I mean? 
no, but obviously, man, particularly amongst the young, yeah, who are concerned about the future. Yeah. You know, so that's what I'm saying. It's like leadership from, you know, it's like the message that's put for us. And a lot of the time, it's like it seems it seems a lot about the, the head, you know, theological debate, and less about the heart. You know, and I think people from, you know, there's there's the. Um, there's the um, kind of idea, or there's there's a, a kind of characterization of the hippie who's just thinking with the heart and has no, no brains up there. You know. You know. By the way, <laughs> some of the verses in the Quran, mm. it says think. It it ha it goes along the lines of thinking with the heart. Yeah. So it's not something completely disconnected mm -hmm. with our belief. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, your heart and your mind. Yes, there's a connection. And either of them we cannot ignore. Mm -hmm. So you think rationally, but at the same time, you also feel emotionally. Mm -hmm. And this is quite important. What about uh, after you die? Do you believe there is there is a life after that? Oh, I have enough concerns <laughs> with this life. <laughs> I know, but you know, we believe yeah. that this life is temporal mm -hmm. and the real life is start after you die okay so in your temporal world you prepare for the real world mm -hmm. so whatever you do here is something that's going to be basically that's going to impact your afterlife so there's another dimension there's another dimension another life after you die it's not something like you breathe your last and that's it you but it's not like come reincarnation no no we don't believe in reincarnation mm -hmm. so what is it you, you, you kind of come into a different we believe in the he heaven and hell concept you don't come into a physical being in the real world no, you don't come back to this world if that's your question. Well, a corporate there's another, body in another dimension. Yeah, there's another, there's another, what do you say, existence in which you're going to exist. And, and this existence is something, yeah, you, so you're going to basically be resurrected. I wouldn't use the word incarnate. So you, you die and you're going to be resurrected. And your life in this world, in this temporal world, is basically going to decide what your afterlife is going to be. So if it is, maybe it's the same like karma, if you want. If you, so if you do good, then, but, but then what is good and what is bad is something defined by the religion rather than your own whims and desires. So basically, I mean, even in your community, I'm sure you might have people who might disagree with each other as to what is good and what is bad. So, but in our faith, we have this uh, spelled out for us as to what is forbidden and what is permitted and if you abide by that then we will basically be judged based on that so after life the resurrection is the day of judgment when every human being good and bad they'll be judged on the day of judgment so we believe that God is the ultimate judge and he's the one who's going to establish justice on that day so say for example you might have someone like Al Capone or someone very very rich and powerful and they might live their whole life I don't know abusing other people and mistreating other people and uh, doing all sorts of evil and maybe some good as well and they just one day they just after leading this life they just die so no one's brought them to account yeah now this is something that you know, shouldn't we intervene if we cannot that's what I'm saying these guys were so powerful that no one could intervene yes and they let they let their entire life. do our best to intervene yeah that's what I'm saying. yeah so as as far as humans are concerned it's obviously everyone's responsibility to bring the people who are oppressive yes who are oppressing the people they should be hold accountable but depending on the factors and the situation of this world maybe those people not might not be uh, be brought to justice and they might have died peacefully who knows yeah leading this evil life they might die peacefully in this world at least at least from the perspective of the people around them now on the day of judgment this person who might have escaped all sorts of uh, justice in this world will not escape the justice in that world mm -hmm. so in a i don't know how much do you know about uh, reincarnation have you studied much about it um, this is the buddhist reincarnation yeah, yeah so i don't I, I mean there's it kind of makes sense to me in some ways does it yeah so let me ask you this if somebody does something evil like this yeah this drug dealer for example yeah mm -hmm. He might come back as a different life form. 
yeah? Who knows, maybe a cockroach or something, yeah? So in a reincarnation world, what is the best thing a cockroach needs to do to become a human again? Is it possible? I, I mean, in that system, can you backtrack? Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you, from what I know at least, yeah? That if you do good, then you come back as a good person. So if you're a good cockroach, yeah. what, is, what is that? Is the thing? What is a good cockroach? Right. Okay. Yeah. How would? What is the best thing a cockroach needs to do to reincarnate as a human being? I don't know. Look after his family. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that is something that didn't make sense to me. So I asked this directly to Buddhists and also to some Hindus who also believe in a very similar reincarnation system. Oh, sorry, a belief. So they were unable to answer. And to me, that doesn't seem convincing that just because someone has led a bad life or a good life, they have another life in which they have to basically restart all over again and go through that process again. Yes, To me, it seems unfair because imagine you had an exam and you know at the end of the exam, you'll be getting some, some reward or you'll be basically going to, I don't know, become an engineer or a doctor or something. Mm. Yes, And then you realize that after you finish the exam, and you passed and you graduated, you have to give another exam, yes, and with the same accept expectations. So this is like a never-ending thing. Whereas in there, I think they, they do end at some point where they become enlightened, and after that there is no more incarnation from what I know. But what I'm, that system, reaching to that level of enlightenment, yes, they have to go through several cycles. Samsara is now something like that. <laughs> yeah, several cycles before they actually reach that, and there's no guarantee they'll reach that. Mm -hmm. So they might be in isn't some sort that, of a. Isn't that through the karmic system? You know, if you are constantly on the path, then you're going to follow that. Like you, I know you've got the Hinayana and the Mahayana. I don't know the. So the Hinayana yeah. is like the more ascetic practice, and yeah. you're going on your own to you know reach enlightenment. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's the Mahayana, a different. Mahayana is more emphasis on the community, yeah. and we're all going together slowly or whatever. Oh, that's that's basically just the ways in which you can attain salvation. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that the process is still there, so you still have to do something in order to gain the good or the bad, depending on your actions. So to me, that doesn't seem to be fair. But in, in Islam, or at least in the Abrahamic faiths, they do have the concept of heaven and hell. So depending on your temporal world in this life, you prepare for your eternal life. Well, I think, I don't know, I've seen the Krishna, Hare Krishnas, they seem to have a concept of hell. Or in their manuals. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking specifically about the Buddhists, for uh -huh. example, because that's what you yeah. kind of uh, allude, uh, alluded to yeah. earlier. Which was more, you know, a system of um, observing the body, observing the thoughts, and um, allowing them to pass. You know, it's like a, for me, it's like a, a good have relaxation. You, have discipline. you looked into Islam? Uh, when I was younger, you know, I used to read stuff, and I've, uh, I've read bits of the Quran. Okay. And there's a lot of funny stories, like when Jesus was born, he came out of the womb speaking, or something like this. Yeah, you know? that's one of the, that right? the miracles of Jesus. Yeah, well, so in the Bible, right. the first miracle is converting water to wine. In right. Quran, Jesus' first miracle was to speak in the cradle. Yeah. But good. there's a reason for that. Do you know why he spoke in the cradle? It was basically during the time of Jesus. The, during the Jewish, uh, uh, when, uh, uh, yeah, during the, uh, I mean, the Jewish community, they were quite conservative. So, because Jesus was born miraculously, the community did not believe that his mother was telling the truth. Obviously, so even if she protested and said, "No, this is some, uh, Jesus was miraculously given to me by God," yes, they wouldn't believe her. So you think and, there was a heavy stigma on that? No, not only stigma. <laughs> there was actually. A, uh, a death penalty at the end if they, if they were not convinced so she would be stoned to death yeah. so it's more than just a stigma yeah, exactly so this was a life and death situation so obviously because we believe that jesus was born miraculously just like the christians do yeah. yes we believe that god has also given protection to his mother at a time when she is unable to defend herself so even if she said something they still wouldn't believe it and they might have